Okay, hello everyone. My name is Rudolf Hornig and on the Omnet team, uh, I'm mostly working either supporting the community and supporting our partners and also uh, I'm working regularly on on distribution and uh, and installation and packaging stuff so that side of the uh, development and <clears throat> i want to tell you today about uh, what we think is the weak points of the omnet installation or more generally the omnet ecosystem i believe you already met with these issues and recently we tried to explore possibilities how to how to fix these uh, issues for the future so uh, what i want to presenting to you is that we find an interesting solution uh, interestingly it's also coming from from cern uh they are using this on the large hard uh, in the large hadron collider too uh this is the called the nix package manager and uh, uh i want to share what we figured out or what we uh <clears throat> experienced uh, trying to use this uh tool so what is our motivation why we are doing this uh I believe you are quite familiar with the with the installation of Omnet, and uh, you know that Omnet is basically a source distribution. So uh, while it's sometimes simple, uh, we have a quite a big installation manual. And uh, first, for example, on on Linux, you have to install uh, extra dependencies. Um, from the native package manager uh, and then i mean compilers and tools and bison and qt and whatever and then basically compile omnet on your local machine and the same is true basically uh, for all the models which are using the omnet because uh, first you have to install a specific version of omnet and then you install a specific version of uh, of the model and if the project is getting quite complicated and depends on a lot of omnet models then it's it quickly gets out of hand like uh, if you take a look at the veins which is very popular project then they they need sumo and uh, open 5g and inet and omnet and a lot of other stuff and it's basically you have to figure out what version should be installed to where and how to compile and so on and so on um, so it's not really an ideal um, scenario for an average user uh, to actually try this this out so the motivation from third side the main motivation is to simplify the the omnet and the model installation to to have a kind of framework or ecosystem where uh, a model installation would be very simple another uh, motivation is that uh, omnet is basically a research tool and for research you write papers and if you are doing research uh, and science then your work has to be uh, reproducible no matter what uh, if you write a paper you should create some kind of description uh, so anybody who is using your uh, paper uh, can try to replicate your code replicate your simulation uh, either to verify it or to actually start working and furthering it and extending it so it would be a very 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 important part that every paper is uh, published and using omnet uh, should be uh, done in a way that uh, reproducibly is ensured uh, there are other main 
pain points uh, for us like uh, sometimes uh, for beginner users uh, the source installation is confusing some people are not familiar with compiler or c plus plus or whatever and omnet and inet can be used on a level where you are basically just using net files and any files and you don't want to deal all the uh, low level detail stuff then uh, it's also a, uh, a problem that sometimes the uh, uh, the base packages, the dependencies are weighty uh, or missing from the repository. Uh, and sometimes uh, you waste a lot of resources. For example, if you are trying to run a simulation on a cluster, then it makes absolutely no sense to install a full Omnet installation with ID and the compiler and whatever, because uh, generally it would what you would need only some binary files that could be run even compiler wouldn't be needed so <clears throat> what use cases we want to 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 cover with this approach the first is what i mentioned is that installing the simulation models uh, should work without manual instruction so ideally you would get a simple command line execute it and then you will get a, a running fully installed uh, model uh, and the other main use case for us would be to to actually create papers or have the ability for paper authors to to write a single line that could reproduce their results uh, on a third party machine uh also for teaching and demoing it would be great if we could create some kind of binary distribution so if you want to show a uh, running simulation to your uh, professor or to the uh, students then you don't have to ask them to install omnet and compilers and whatever uh, you just want to see them and play around them uh, also a use case is that you should be able to easily deploy uh, your simulation on a cluster or cloud without too much resources or uh, for model developers we identified also a use case when uh, it's often happens that you are switching back and forth between different versions of inet omnet your own packages because while you are developing the current version, some users uh, drop in and report some errors for an older version. You have to check that, whether that's really a thing. So it's it's a very common case uh, when you switching quickly between different versions. And <clears throat> some use cases, it would be very, very nice to have a kind of self-contained binary distribution. So if you have a really working uh, setup uh, qt based simulation then you would just create an executable put it on an usb stick and you can demo it wherever you want so you don't wouldn't even need some kind of internet connection to do that these are the main use cases the first two is what is essential for us okay no i'm jumping a little ahead uh, and the reason is because um uh, uh, I want to do a stunt. Uh, if you have a Linux machine and you are daring, then you can uh, even follow me during the presentation and try out everything I'm trying to show you. Uh, <clears throat> if you have a Windows machine with Windows, uh, with Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, an Ubuntu-based image is also working over there. And probably even on Mac OS, if you have... Uh, uh intel based mac machine it could work also but right now if you have linux you can try installing uh, this stuff to help you a bit uh, i will i will copy here the the installation instructions so you can copy paste copy and paste it out from the uh, chat so these are basically the commands. Uh, uh, the sorry, 
this command is the sh command is what installs uh, basically uh, the Nix package manager. It, it will create a, a, a folder in the root. Uh, it's called Nix. If you are afraid to to actually allow this uh, this script to to execute uh, uh, with root privilege, then uh, the first line allows you to actually create a Nix folder, an empty writable Nix folder uh, in the root. And if you execute this with root privilege, uh, after that, the uh, installation uh, doesn't require anything. So Nix is very easy to install. Uh, it just stores everything in the root folder, uh, the Nix, uh, in the root Nix folder. And one additional thing that you will need, you will need, is that um, uh, you will have to add some lines to the config nix config file if you execute this echo statement that will write the the correct statement basically we are uh, enabling some exper uh, experimental features to nix that allows us to work together now after if you installed it and restarted your shell then you can try out the nix minus minus version command to see if it's working i'm just putting this ahead so uh, you can play it uh, around while I'm continuing the, the presentation and then we will get back to, to various next commands later. So <clears throat> uh, I want to just quickly summarize what's the current situation. So right now, uh, what we have, uh, the source distribution, I really won't go too much details. Uh, you can check, I, I've tried to, to summarize the, the the advantages and disadvantages to the uh, various stuff. Uh, right here, I just want to show and highlight one uh, really big disadvantage is that the manual dependency handling for a mod models is a nightmare, basically. So, uh, you know, everybody knows that uh, you just, you see also messages on the Omnet mailing list, what kind of INET version is used, should be used. It's not working with that, and so on, and so on. Uh, there are other issues. Uh, I'm not going into this because of the lack of time, but you can check it on the uh, slides later. So uh, one solution that some people tried is to actually create native packages for Omnet. Uh, <coughs> it's easy for the user, but unfortunately, these are mostly binary packages. So if you want to modify anything, it's really, really hard to, to rebuild these packages. It's also a problem that you cannot install multiple versions of the uh, Omnet library. And it doesn't help that there are several different uh, package systems. Uh, we should then build Debian and RPM on macOS. We have Homebrew and Mac ports, and we don't even know whether Windows has a proper package system. So it's it's really hard uh, to implement. Not to mention that once we create these packages for Omnet, uh, it doesn't solve the the problem that the models themselves should be somehow packages. And requiring the model developers to actually do these things is is just not feasible. Nobody would do that. <clears throat> also, it's a problem with, with reproducibility. Like if uh, these are very strictly bound to the actual operating system version. So if uh, in 10 years you want to reproduce something, then it will be very hard. To, to find an old image of the operating system and install it in a virtual box and so on and so on. <coughs> the other solution that's, that's uh, deployed currently, for example, by Veins and several other projects is to create full-blown virtual mes uh, machine images. Uh, these are quite reproducible and very nice to, to have for, uh, for demo purposes. Uh, because you have a consistent environment. The problem is that uh, they are mostly built by hand. Uh, and uh, an additional problem is that it's very hard to work with them uh, 
for development because everything is contained inside the virtual machine. So you cannot really modify, you cannot really use your own uh, tools, you can't integrate it into your own, own uh, workflow. Uh, and also, if something should be updated, then everything should be rebuilt from the scratch. And then also, you have to distribute these very, very big images, like several gigabytes in size. It's just not really um, so nice. Uh, the one thing that we are using mostly uh, until now were Docker images, uh, which are a little bit better behaving than the virtual machines because they can uh, share uh, the lower levels of the uh, of the of the dependencies so you can build uh, different images on top of uh, earlier existing images uh, this solves some problem to some extent like if we are providing uh, docker images for omnet 6 then every project can based on that. So it's a kind of research sharing. But the problem is that they can only inherit or based on a single image. So if you get a complex a complex project where you have INET and uh, OMNET and base tools and SUMO and whatever, then it's getting quite com complicated to build the actual uh, Docker images. The other problem is that, as we saw in previous presentations, is that uh, if you are using Docker, that somebody has to build them and somebody has to publish them on Docker Hub. If uh, it's not published, then you may be able to, to actually build it locally. But you have to know how to do that, how to, where to find the Docker image, and such. So it's it's basically it's it's not transparent to the user. Uh, if you have Docker images, then it's easy. If you don't have, then it's getting quite complicated to actually build the, the Docker image. And here comes the, in the Nix Nix package manager. Uh, we found that it creates perfect reproducibility so the the once you install something with this package manage, manager then every component is bit by bit uh, guaranteed to be the same uh, down to the level of the kernel so the layer where the isolation is stops is basically the the kernel uh, so it's it's the whole user space is uh technically uh control uh i won't go into the many advantages uh, i will mention them later uh, there is one probably disadvantage is that it's not present it's not available for windows natively but we've just tried that the windows system for linux uh is basically solving this problem because we can deploy uh, a VSL, let's say, terminal uh, on Windows and then just do the Linux stuff as usual. Uh, it's very easy and the, on Windows 11, it's even working with graphical problems. The good thing is that uh, it's supported on macOS uh, and it's seemingly even supported on ARM-based macOS. So probably the first time when we will be able to to actually use ARM-based uh, Macintoshes uh, will be when we will boot it and build it with the uh, Nix package manager. Right now it's not working on ARM-based, uh, but not because of us, but rather some Python packages are not still not working on that, but that's a different story. So what is, uh, in general, what is the Nix package manager? How does it work? What does it do? It allows reproducible builds and deployments. That's that's the easiest thing. Uh, it runs on Mac OS and Linux. And uh, what you should do to actually uh, support this, it's very easy. You just need a so-called flake file. They call it flake for some reason. Uh, it's basically a very simple uh, 
description of how to build your system from the source. And you put this flake file into the repository of your model, into the root of the model. And once you publish that repository in a public space, you are done, basically. You can use that uh, URL to specify uh, 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 an actual version of your product. In this flake, uh, what does it do? Uh, yeah, one thing, it's primary, and it's very important, it's primarily a source-based distribution. So what you describing in the in this flake file is that how to build the the project your project uh, based on its dependencies so you have to specify exactly their dependencies formally and where to download your source and how to build that basically that's it and uh, it's par primarily uh, a source distribution, but it has a caching layer, a binary caching layer. So that helps because uh, in case you don't have, uh, or sorry, in case you have already compiled somewhere or someone has compiled uh, this package, uh, it can utilize also those binaries. So what happens if you install something? Uh, <coughs> What Nix is doing basically it checks whether the actual installation or package you requested uh, requested is uh, present in the Nix store directory. If it present, then it just maps that uh, installation into your user environment and it's done. It could basically take something like uh, two or five milliseconds, so it's instant. Uh, if it doesn't, if it's not present on your machine, then it can look out to the internet and to pre-configured pre uh, uh, servers, it can check basically whether it's present there. If some other users have compiled this and published it on the cache server, then it just downloads the binary versions from there without compiling. Uh, that could take some some few seconds maybe uh, if there is no binary cache uh, outside the internet then it still can uh, download the sources and start the compilation on the uh, on your machine taking into account that it has dependencies so first it does uh, this whole process for all the dependencies so if you don't have a compiler it even starts it even can start compiling uh, the Clang and the GCC compiler on your machine. Uh, so it's basic, uh, it's recursively does everything and then places uh, the results into the NIT store. Uh, so what will you need to uh, to support your model? Add the FlakeNix file to the root directory, and that's all. Uh, you will specify. Uh, your dependencies, which are also these kind of next next URLs, uh, <coughs> and that's it. Uh, the main thing is that the build, the output of the build, doesn't depend on anything except the dependencies and the source you provide. Uh, so the state of the compiler tool chain and the state of your uh, machine. Uh, Nothing is basically uh, important, only the flex file, a flake file, sorry. Uh, <coughs> this behavior allows the, the actual uh, caching. No, uh, I won't go into the flake example. It's, it's quite simple. Obviously, it could be uh, getting complicated. And no, uh, depending on uh, whether you were able to actually uh, install the Nix package manager, if you could, then I'm inviting you to try this command. Which is, uh, as you can say, Nix develop. We have a minus e here and a URL. The URL describes that we are looking uh, on the GitHub. Uh, obviously, 
you can host it even on FTP if you prefer. It's just specific for GitHub. And the Omnet PP project. Uh, and we have a version identifier here in the blue. Right now, this is a branch, but this could be also a specific tag or even a, a hash of the of the of the com commit. Uh, once you specify that, this fixes what version of Omnet you want to download. It will download the the tarball, uh, extract it, uh, use the flake file to figure out what to download and what to do. So once you uh, execute this, and I will switch to to here, and I will try to yeah. Here I have, I will just add minus A. Minus I means that I want to isolate uh, everything uh, in this shell. So when I execute this, then I'm seeing that it set up the Omnet. Uh, Omnet 6.0.1 is ready. And as you can see, it's running from an X store directory. So it's not from local. But it's running. Everything is already was installed in my store. Uh, if it wouldn't be installed, it would try to download it from the internet, or uh, as a last resort, it would start to build it. And here, if you can check it, I already have all the uh, usual Omnet PP commands, and I could run everything, everything here. Uh, excellent. So. That's how simple it is to install Omnet from now on. Then, uh, OK, we have Omnet installed, but how do we start to developing uh, models? Uh, it's rather easy. If you want to develop models, then we will provide some templates for you, just like the, uh, the new project wizard in the ID. Uh, we can also uh, add flake files to to here, for example, in the uh, samples directory, I have annotated the TikTok template, the TikTok uh, tutorial in the samples directory. I have added its own flake file. So it's a kind of uh, standalone model. It becomes a standalone TikTok model. Obviously, it could be INET or whatever we prefer. And with this uh, command line, we can create a new skeleton uh, folder that could be used as a starting point. Like uh, I've created Nix file and, and want to create a new uh, project called my TikTok, and I'm specifying a template here. So uh, this one part is specifying what Omnet version, and this is that uh, inside that version I have a specific template predefined already. We can provide several different templates if we want. Uh, but right now, if I execute this, then you will see that it, it just copies everything out. So it copied out the, the TikTok, TikTok folder here. So here, right now, I have only a single my TikTok folder. And if I'm just looking into, I can see that this this contains uh, everything that uh, that is inside the samples. No, it's a standalone stuff. I, I, I don't even have to. I have Omnet only inside the, the, the actual Nix store. And you can see that we have provided also the necessary flake files for this to work. So uh, how can I compile this? Well, I, I have the files now. I've initiated and created a new project. So I will just uh, start the development prompt with the proper version of Omnet. And then what would you do? I just create a make file. And then build it. And once I've built it, uh, I can hopefully see that we have a my TikTok uh, file created. So if I execute my TikTok, then voila, 
we have a running uh, we have a running version of uh, Qt uh, with minimal uh, requirements. So you already can start running, uh, developing, playing around uh, with these three little scripts. And finally, if uh, <coughs> If you even don't want to deal with the with the I will just delete this. So all the details. You just want to show uh, a TikTok uh, demo to someone, then uh, you can also execute and define so called of runnable. Uh, here, runnable um, entries in the flake file. So here you specify next run, you provide what version and from what project which has flake file. Uh, and if you execute something, then you just get uh, the running executable without any compilation or knowledge to how to do this you can try it out you can run it you can demo it to everyone else uh, so this is how you are running a model uh, and this is what you supposed to do when you publish a paper to create a self-running uh, entry in the flake file that allows you to execute the whole simulation for the third party to play around uh, well there is a lot of other stuff but i will save you from that you can explore the dependencies between the models right here you can see that for this uh, tiktok sample there are dependencies only on omnet here and it specifies the exact omnet version which is depends too but obviously this covers the whole dependency tree uh, back down to the actual compilers and operating system uh, or low level libraries here it's specified by the next package hash so um that concludes my my presentation uh I hope you find it useful and uh, my plan is that once I've worked out everything this is pretty much a work in progress and right now the ID itself is not uh, incorporated into this but I believe I will provide a, a separate package for the ID uh, but this with this approach um, most of the use cases are covered and once it's finished uh, it's even possible to deploy this on existing version of omnet so i expect to to have uh, these flake files on the latest omnet 5 version and an omnet 6 version 2 so uh, and at that point i will start to maybe to contact uh, framework developers and help them also to migrate and add flake files to their own repositories um, well no thanks for the attention and then if you have questions or ideas what we should look for just don't hesitate to let me know Okay, I'd like to have a question, but uh, not not to you, Rudolf, but uh, to everyone. Like, does someone think that Nix would make their life a little bit easier? Want, uh, what was there anyone who? Do? What? what do don't you hear you. We can't hear you, Anders. Was there anyone who was able to follow and install and run something? Do you have a plan to have an Omnet version which can work 
into the old INET frameworks. No, uh, uh, it depends on what what uh, INET version you prefer to to work with Omnet. Uh, the problem is it's it's not about Omnet; it's about INET. I mean, INET should be uh, ported forwards. It's uh, pretty much uh, the INET. I mean, the latest INET 3.8 is compiling with Omnet 6. We made some porting in regards to that, and also the latest INET 4 version is also working with 6. Okay, can I ask some questions? That uh, Did anyone have any problem uh, getting I some simulation model working before? Some, some simulation model written by others? I can hear Andras. It's funny that you can't hear him, Rudolf. Uh, can everyone else hear Andras as well?